out your clothes Devil is mad What's going on, people? Mike C Town here with another episode of What Do You Want to Know, where you ask your questions. If I like your questions, I answer your questions on camera. So we have a bit of a long question, so I'm going to jump right into this one. This comes from Ben, and he says, This is quite a serious and sensitive topic, and hope I've worded it all right, but hope you find it interesting. Unfortunately, many artists have passed quite recently, like Mac Miller, XXX, and Little P, but I find the response to their deaths, mostly on social media, quite strange. Whilst it is important to remember and celebrate an artist's life, people seem to almost romanticize their deaths. When Mac passed away, I saw loads of posts showing how Mac was their idol and their biggest inspiration when none of these people seemed to mention anything when his album came out like a month ago. When David Bowie died, it made me look back into his catalog and explore a lot more of his music that I didn't know as well, and I was really grateful for it, but I'm not going to pretend like he was my idol and my life changed like many other people I knew did. Why do people react like this when an artist passes away? Also, I really have a problem in how people seem to romanticize the suffering of artists, especially when the artists can be in positions like Mac or Little Peep suffering from drug overdoses. I feel like this shit has been going on forever back to the days of jazz music. Artists have touched on this. I think Denzel Curry's video for Clout Cobain makes the point very well. I know Tyler the Creator pointed out this issue as well, saying that all of his fans seem to hate the fact that he wasn't making songs that were more sad when he made Cherry Bomb, which was a much more happier album. Why do you think fans seem to indulge in an artist's suffering? Wow, well, this is a two-fold, maybe three or four-fold question. Um, I'll tackle the idea of romanticizing the death of artists first. Um, first off, I think it's natural to dive into an artist's catalog once they die, especially if you didn't pay them that much attention when they were alive. Um, I had the urge to go back and explore more of Mac Miller's music once he died. Uh, I didn't do it, but the urge was there. Uh, same with Lil Peep, you know, I, I listened to a song or two when he was alive, and once he died, I think I listened to maybe two more, and it just solidified that I didn't like his music, and I moved on. The thing is, I don't think that there's anything wrong with throwing up an RIP for a life loss if that's what you want to do, especially when it comes to someone as young as Mac or Peep. You know, these are young creatives that lost their lives really early, you know, their music it's not inseparable from the person, so I can dislike everything I've heard from Mac Miller or Little Pete, but I can still say rest in peace because I can acknowledge that they're still talented artists who, while not for me, their lives were simply taken away too early. As far as those pretending that an artist that they don't truly listen to is their idol when they die, um, I think that's just another display of people trying to be part of the bigger group. You know, on Twitter, it's an easy way to get a bunch of retweets and attention if you can say the most profound thing about this dead artist. Also, you already know that there's going to be a ton of people waxing poetic about this person, so you can immediately fit into that popular group and get a big old bucket of instant verification and validation by saying something that would immediately put you into that group. You know, it's all about raising people's opinion of themselves. Plus, depending on the artist, I think that them pretending to be a fan makes them seem more cultured. You know, when an artist dies, if they were really influential to an entire group of people, even if they didn't mean shit to them, these posers will still pretend that the dead artist meant a lot to them because it makes it seem like they were they were more in the know of something. You know, especially if it's some sort of obscure artist that was really popular to a distinct sect of people, but maybe not to the larger populace. You know, they mentioned this guy passing and all of their friends go, you know, who's this person that, that Joe's talking about? Joe must really have his ear to the streets. It's all a bunch of self-congratulatory hipster bullshit. But as far as celebrities go, yeah, I can totally see your point. You know, when XXX died, you had everyone from Chris Brown to, to Game going on about how influential he was. But I don't remember them saying this shit when he was alive. Maybe I missed it. Um, I also don't remember seeing any collaborations between X and these people. Maybe I missed those too, since I don't really check for these guys' music outside of Game. But I think we all know that the majority of the populace was not appreciative or interested in X's music. And to actual fans of his music, it seems corny, it seems whack, 
Uh, it seems disingenuous and it seems downright disgusting for these people to pretend that they were. But on the flip side, I do want to say that you can't always assume to know what's in people's hearts. Just because they haven't talked about an artist in a long time or ever, that doesn't mean that that artist meant nothing to them. You know, I, I didn't talk about Prince regularly, uh, but when he died, it really bummed me out. Because his music held a special place for me because it was connected to certain times in my life. You know, I grew up on Prince, especially albums like Purple Rain, which was a large chunk of my childhood, you know? And, and when he died, it also resurrected the realization in me of how talented he was, and it actually made me upset with myself, you know, and, and regret not talking about him a lot more when he was alive. Which leads me to another part of this, you know, it, it may be a level of, of selfishness, but when we mourn the death of an artist, we're also mourning the art that they didn't get to create. You know, when, when, when Kurt Cobain died, a lot of people were saddened because they felt like he hadn't reached his greatest potential yet, or, or that he had more music to provide the world. You know, the, the same goes for people like Elliot Smith, like Big, like Pac, like, like Idea, you know, Big L, Camuteo, Roz Williams, or anybody else who died way too early. And again, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Now about why we romanticize the suffering of artists, I think that's an interesting take on this. Uh, I want to first discuss how a lot of us may, may enjoy certain aspects of certain artists because they represent certain aspects of ourselves that we're not entirely comfortable putting out in the open. For instance, you, you may have rappers who rap a lot about sex. You know, now because of the type of person that I am, I may not be comfortable talking about sex or women in this way because I feel like it can come off as disrespectful to women or it can just be inappropriate. But there may be a part of me that indulges in these ideas that these rappers are speaking about. You know, my desire to be respectful of women doesn't absolve me from my interest in sex, you know? Or, or if an artist makes music about being depressed, I may feel the same way but not feel comfortable talking about it. So what this artist does is, is it gives me a place to turn, right? It makes me feel like I'm not alone with these weird feelings that I have. You know, and I've said this about The Cure, I've said this about Morrissey, you know, these artists were instrumental in making me feel less weird for feeling the way I did about life and society and about people in general, you know? I, I don't know if I would call that indulging or romanticizing versus simply empathizing. You know, they say that pain produces the best art, and in my experience, I tend to think that that's true. You know, and that's not to say that you can't create fantastic art if you're a genuinely happy person. I'm just saying that it probably won't really mean a whole lot to me. You know, when you hear people talk about dark or depressing art and why it means something to them, a lot of times they say it's because they can relate to it. But I've noticed that when you hear people talk about why they like happy or self-indulgent music, they seem to say, well, it makes me feel good. Um, or they'll say it's escapism. Um, escapism from what? You know, it's, it's escapism from the shit that we have to deal with in our day to day. The type of shit that these so-called depressing artists are singing about. And the fact that so many artists die young makes me feel like there's some sort of correlation between an early death and being so open to the world. I don't know, maybe perhaps bearing so much weight on their shoulders by being open about their issues and addictions and having to, in turn, uh, become representatives for so many people. You know, a lot of times that shit can be too much for them to bear and it just leads them to an early grave. Um, just, just speculation. We have to really think about the fact that these were people who died. People who, aside from creating art for public consumption, you know, they will no longer be able to, to, to laugh, to love, to cry, to shit, to, to kiss, to fuck. You know what I mean? All of these things were cut short for these people. They didn't get that many days on this earth and they happened to spend a lot of them creating art, you know? And I think that that's an amazing contribution to the world that should be commended whether their art is enjoyed by me or not. So that's it for this uh, episode of What Do You Want to Know? Hopefully, Ben, I answered your question. Um, if not, hey, let me know. And uh, you guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down there. And if you want me to answer your questions, make sure you email them to ctownwdywk at gmail.com. And as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right?
Peace out, boy.